The box office top ten. Oh, you can do that. This tu- what, what What would you like me to do? No, that's fine. I just like to know what you're doing. La Vie en Rose at ten. You know, it's not uh, Marianne Cotillard doing her own vocals. The argument being that nobody can sing like Edith Piaf. But I honestly think that what the film really needed was a coherent voice, and perhaps her singing would have given it to the film. And I also think that it is rather rum, not to say French, to do an entire movie about somebody whose life was 40-something years and leave out the whole of World War II. Le Carb, is it? Yeah, well, now, because we weren't shown this, but I looked up for reviews of it, and the only one I could find was on, on India FM, which says... It's, it opens the most shocking thriller of the year, but then it says, with a tagline like that, you're expecting that that's the tagline. I'm afraid the best they can say about it is to sum up, it's watchable fare. Terms like predictable and monotonous are non-applicable, and it is engrossing in parts. Now, if anyone's seen Nakab and can give us a more thorough rundown of it, please do email. I know that people have been uh, emailing in reviews of the non-press show at Bollywood Films, so please do. Um, at number eight, Moliere, and Matthew says, Sam, can you tell Dr Kermit that Moliere is pronounced to rhyme with where... What the, what, how was I? Was Moliere. I saying Moliere? Yes. Was I? Okay, and it's Moliere. It's Moliere. And what did you say? And it's, I said Moliere. Did you? My mother being a French teacher. So Is I your mother a French she teacher? Was, she was. a peripatetic so French teacher. All these years of me bad-mouthing the French, and yes. you've been sitting there not mentioning that your mother was a French teacher. Well, she's not French, though. No, but she's a French teacher. It doesn't matter. Okay, fine. Moliere. Moliere. Is Shakespeare in love en français? Moliere en amour. It's light and frothy, and it's like a Battenberg cake, but it's not much more than that. Hostel Part 2 at 7. One hopes that Hostel will be out of the top ten next week. Uh, it, there was an interesting news story uh, that I was e- emailed today, which said that Captivity did not have a captive audience, and in fact it had done really badly at the box office and was going to ship up on DVD really quickly, and I have to say I thought, good, I'm really glad that that horrible, cynical piece of grot has done really badly. It's a shame that Hostel Part 2, which is a better made film, but, you know, it's like comparing different forms of warts, really. I mean, you know, one of them is better than the other, but it's... Still it's a pretty horrible. level field. I'm just sad that Eli Roth is, is hanging out with Quentin Tarantino. I think the best thing anyone could do is take Quentin Tarantino and put him in a box somewhere and send him, you know, off. Cynical levels of grot, though, do quite well on DVD, don't they? Well, it'll like do better. that Sex, Lies of the Potato did okay on DVD. It is alleged. Every time we say this about Sex, Lies of the Potato, Men was a stinker and it flopped. It was, oh, no, it made money on DVD. Rug Suckers from Mars apparently made money on DVD. I mean, it's really nothing to be proud of. Donk's Go Beat has just been re-released on DVD, the movie that I described as the Plan 9 from Outer Space of British pop movies, and that'll probably make money on DVD, so don't come around here telling me that actually we're wrong about Sex Lives of the Pleasure Man because it took money on DVD, as the Film Council are so, you know, eager to tell us all. Ocean's 13 at 5. Um, you missed, oh, missed out, out number pir- six, didn't well, you? it was Pirates. Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean. I refer listeners to... OK, Ikea plans. Nightly, Orlando Bland, Nest of Tables. That's, that's enough, Ed. Uh, Ocean's 13 at five. Julian Sands. Fantastic Four, or just four, Rise of the Silver Surfer at four. Uh, I, as I said, the comic book fans have sort of leapt to its defence. I, I don't think it has much to say about the, the Silver Surfer legend, and I think it is too shiny, shiny for its own good, although I, it's less bothersome than the first Fantastic Four movie, which really did trouble me quite a lot. Uh, at three, Die Hard, four point less. Yes, ba-boom, and I wish I'd made that gag. I mean, it's funny, pe- people who go and see... I, I, don't, I can't find anyone who actually thinks that Die Hard 4.0 is a good film, because it clearly isn't a good film. Shrek the Third, is it number two? <sighs> Would that it was the last of the Shrek movies, but it's not. Shrek the Fourth is due for 2010. I mean, I really feel that like they have wrung every ounce of possibility out of this now. The final book is out on Saturday, of course, and the latest movie is in at number one, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Have you read the final book? I mean, because you're out till Saturday. No, I know, but you know, you're connected. Have I seen an advanced copy? No, I didn't think so. No. I think you can say the security is quite tight. Yeah, I hear that. Apparently, it is. Yeah. I mean, is it? Are there going to be any great revelations? She said that the the last word is not going to be scar. She said for ages. What's her name? What's Kevin her? Rowlands. What's her name? J.K. Rowling. Her. She was on television. <laughs> two Rye. Two Rye. That's right. Yeah. That what happens at the end. He joins Dexy's Midnight Runners and goes on tour with him. She said that for ages and ages the last word was going to be scar, but now it isn't. Wow. That really tells you absolutely everything you need to know. Hairspray would be the headline-grabbing movie of the weekend. So, it's such a peculiar thing we're in now. Okay. 
Hairspray, it, the film, is based on the multiple award-winning Broadway musical, which was itself based on the not multiple award-winning John Waters movie from the 1980s. So it's like the producers. It's gone from screen to stage and then back to screen. You remember in the case of the producers, that did not work out well. Producers, great Mel Brooks film, apparently very, very good stage show, totally rubbish film of apparently very, very good stage show. In the case of this, Hairspray, the original Hairspray, quirky, offbeat, it was at the point at which John Waters was becoming very mainstream because he started out as Trash Maestro. And, you know, good film. Then apparently a very good stage show. I didn't see it, but it won loads and loads of awards. And now back to screen. So it has a difficult pedigree ahead of it. The story is 1962 Baltimore. Uh, a teenager, Tracy Turnblatt, wants to be on the Corny Collins show, which is a sort of dancing show for kids. Two reasons why she can't do it. The first is she believes in integration and the whole area is completely white, except for what they have is, which is called Negro Day, in which they're allowed to play plaque music. And uh, the other thing is she is she's plump she's of a larger size so she's classic john waters character in fact misfit because actually all his films are about the revenge of the misfit the, the people on the outside becoming the heroes what happens is she finally gets the chance to have her dream when they have an audition and she goes along to do it and of course as you can imagine this being the story that it is things work out and the misfits in the end come to rule the day now this remake is directed by adam shankman who's famous for helming a load of old poop frankly films like the wedding planner the pacifier oh, an awful lot of poop i'm about. sorry it's not my fault it's just ha that happens to be the week that we are um the che cheaper by the dozen two i mean you know that's poop. so yeah, from jo well. from john waters to adam, adam shankman not great now the original also starred divine a famous fat transvestite who caused a uh, gay disco to become you know very very well with he had, did a brilliant version of you, you think, think you're, you're a man. man you remember that which you're is absolutely really great boy. this time you're really a boy which is also a remake of an old 50 song which is a great song this stars john travolta fat transvestite well slightly porky not a transvestite the last time i looked although he does of course you know dress up as a woman in this film who of course famously made disco famous with his saturday night fever and although frankly i would rather listen to the divine version of you think you're a man than some of the saturday night fever soundtrack i quite like saturday night fever night on a disco mountain who could ask for more exactly a fifth of beethoven <laughs> da, 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 dum, dum. Uh, and uh, both versions start in the central role an unknown in the original ricky lake and of course, look what happened to Ricky Lake. She became, well, she became Ricky Lake. This time, by a weird verbal coincidence, Nikki Blomsky. Christopher Walken playing a role which in the original is played by Jerry Stiller, who in this version plays Mr. Pinky, who runs the Hefty Hideaway, which is where they go to get their clothes for the, for the larger person. Queen Latifah takes over from Ruth Brown as Motormouth Maybell, and then John Waters himself gets a cameo, and it's a very brief cameo, as the friendly neighbourhood flasher. And then in the role that was originally done by Debbie Harry, this is so bizarre, Michelle Pfeiffer, plays the role that in the original was played by Debbie Harry. Meanwhile, Debbie Harry's songs have become the backbone of a musical version of Desperately Seeking Susan on stage. Does any of it work? Well, yes and no. On the upside, the um, the songs are quite jolly. The songs are quite nicely done. I mean, I, I laughed out loud quite a few times. There is something, I mean, it's a lovely story because it's, you know, obviously it's, it's very sort of soft racial politics, but it's done very nicely. He does have a great way of doing outsiders, all great people who are, you know, the white waspy people are all absolutely terrible. And it's not badly put together at all. That Nikki Blonsky is terrific. It wouldn't surprise me at all if she does turn out to be the next Ricky Lake. Ricky Lake incidentally gets a very fleeting cameo as somebody who isn't Nikki Blonsky, which is sort of reverse in gag funny for those of us old enough to remember that Ricky Lake started her career in John Waters movies. Christopher Walken is Christopher Walken. The weird thing about it is, for a song and dance film, Walken doesn't do very much dancing, which is strange. Because he, he can. Yeah, I mean, he's really an extraordinarily peculiar dancer. I mean, he's, you know, he's rubbery and bandy and all that kind of way. And it, what's, the, what's the Fat Boy Slim track that he dances to? I can't remember, but it's a fantastic that video. One. It is you look very it, camp when you do an impression. When I do that, what you mean? Yeah. And the other thing about Christopher Walken, of course, is he has fantastic hair. It doesn't matter what film he's in, it's his hair is always completely the same. So his hair's there, but there's not enough dancing of him. Travolta, however, is really, really weird. And it is saying something when, you know, a fat, poop-eating transvestite like Divine is less weird than John Travolta. It, because John, John Travolta gave me the creeps. I mean, not in a in necessarily in a totally bad way, but he he says something really, really strange about his performance and his manner and his uh, everything about him. Not that that's necessarily to the detriment of the film, but it is very, very odd. My main criticism is this: original film, ninety two minutes. This this version, one hundred seventeen minutes, and it should have been ninety two minutes because it needs to be tightened up. But you know what? It's fun, and in a summer in which it's really not been very good, it's not. 
it you know it's perfectly fine it has very nice things going for it and i did smile through an awful lot of it